Welcome to episode four of Book Nerd Paradise, where we get to know an author a little bit as they tell us one of their favorite quotes, read from their work, pose a trivia question, and give away a book or two. I'm L.R.W. Lee, author of the Andy Smithson Fantasy Adventure Series, and today we welcome as our guest science fiction and fantasy author Leah London. Leah is the author of nine novels in a variety of genres. She started writing comedic sketches and nature poetry as a schoolgirl in Scotland where her family lived for three years. She traveled and read as much as possible and has never really come back to suburban reality since. Her first writing love is humor, but she's added fantasy and science fiction to the mix. Leah says she's a happily married wife and mother, but with all due respect, I have to question that, for she's also a black belt in Taekwondo. Hmm, kind of makes you wonder. Anyway, when she's not writing, she's teaching, singing, or reading. Welcome, Leah. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Yes, that black belt is handy for enforcing things to make that happy family. <laughs> <laughs> So, Leah, what will you be giving away to our, our, our viewers? I will be giving away two copies of Magian High. This is an urban fantasy, um, young adult audience, and uh, it's set in a world where there are uh, segregation between smart people, athletic and mechanically inclined people, and mages. And this story is a story of how they all come together for the first time, and it's, it's kind of a adventure action uh, with a moral to the story of that how we need to all work together but it's it's pretty pretty action-packed all you need to do to enter to win the giveaway is to leave a comment that's all it takes it's really simple uh, just bear in mind liking the episode is not going to enter you into the giveaway so please leave a leave a comment before you leave to help our listeners get to know you a little bit You've selected a favorite quote. What is it and why is it a favorite? I chose one from Harry Potter. Uh, it's at the end of Chamber of Secrets when Dumbledore is explaining a little bit to Harry. And he just says, um, it is our choices that show what we truly are far more than our abilities. Mm. And I remember the first time that I heard that, I was like, wow, yes, because for so long I had identified myself with what I could do. And the risk with that is that I would compare myself and feel in competition with others and uh, that just sets you up for heartache because there's always somebody who's better today or tomorrow or whatever mm -hmm. and so when I started evaluating myself by my choices and how I do things and what um, what actions I take not just oh I sing or oh I do Taekwondo or, or I write um, then it just changed how I felt about myself gave me a lot more confidence and and I just, I love that quote. I think that is who, what defines us, is what we do with the choices we have. So Leah's going to be reading from her urban fantasy, Magin High, which is about finding something more powerful than magic to overcome the past. At this moment in the story, uh, we are seeing the first time that mages and gnomers who are non-magical people are coming together um, for a social event. These are groups that have been generally hostile towards each other in the past. The narrator is a young boy who's a senior. His name is Kincaid and it was kind of, he really lobbied for this. He really wanted to have um, these groups mix. Um, he has a girlfriend, Amity, who originally came from a school called Wiser, which was for all the smart Alex, the really brainiacs. And there's also a gal named Ricky who is um, incredibly physically adapted all kinds of different things and they've organized this party um, and they're hoping that people will show up so that's what's that's going on right now so Kincaid is speaking and he's a senior at the high school the cute guy on the cover I opened the door wide and said welcome everyone about time you got here I can't eat everything myself am I seriously the first to get here asked Ricky slipping past me into the room squinting into the darkness I saw a car stopped outside a man waved, so I waved back, and then he drove off. By the time I turned around back to the living room, Ricky and Elizabeth were doing the girl hug greeting. Are you it? Ricky put her hands on her hips. Well, don't act all excited to see me. No, no, I mean, I mean, yes, I'm happy to see you, but where are the others? Curry will be here in a minute. 
I think he's picking up a few of the mages along the way. Flying? I'm not sure, she shrugged. I sat down next to Amity, who smiled brightly. So they're all just fashionably late. This is great. Thanks so much for coming, Ricky. How are classes going? Whatever boring scholastic conversation followed, I missed because Kelsey started calling out my name. I could hear Mom trying to quiet her, but I ended up jumping up to her room. What is it, Kelsey? I'm trying to have a party down here. Someone's in the trees outside, she whimpered, pointing out the window. I slouched. Kelsey, please not this again. There are no monsters. No such thing. But no fairies either. I leaned over and tousled her hair. You're safe up here. But I'll save you some cupcakes, okay? I moved toward the door. I love you, Kelsey. Sleep tight. When I came back downstairs, Ricky was standing in the front door, calling out, Hey guys, come on in! A minivan was parked outside, and the door slid open with a clunk. Five kids got out, all of whom I recognized as seniors from Wiser. I was surprised that Ricky even knew them, but appreciated her contagious enthusiasm. She made me look like a social slug. I joined her at the door and greeted each kid, introducing myself to the others that were already inside. Four mages flew up, curry among them. They looked around nervously and hovered above the bottom step of the porch. Glad you could make it, I said, feeling like flying myself. We had an almost 50-50 split of mages and gnomers, and from what I could tell, they were all pretty cool. Curry stayed in the background a little until Ricky came forward to draw him in. As I shut the door behind them, two sounds filled the air, a high-pitched scream from upstairs and a roaring swoosh from outside the door. I opened the door to find the porch in flames. The room erupted in shouts, and all the mages with water magic started balling up hornet soda and Mom's punch to douse the flame. I ran upstairs to where Mom was pulling Kelsey away from the window. One glance outside told me all I needed to know. Jack and at least a half a dozen other punkers hovered in the branches of the tree, looking at us. Jack caught my eye, and the smug look on his face chilled my spine. Out the back! Out the back! shouted Mom. Everyone ran through the house and out the kitchen to the back door. But from there, we all ran around to the front to see what had happened. Mom used her cell phone to call the fire department while the gnomers went for the hose. I watched Jack and the punkers in the trees. Moving quickly, I took Kelsey in my arms and backed away from them. But Jack swooped down, so he stood in the air just above our heads. Hey, Curry, thanks for the invite. This party's hot. He showered us with sparks, and everyone shouted back at him while cowering from the danger. Suddenly, the ground dropped about three feet. The punkers had opened a giant dirt hole beneath us. Curry's mouth fell open, his expression unreadable. The other kids turned on him, accusing, questioning. Ricky started to cry. Jack flew down with his body parallel to the ground and his face close to Curry's. Your baby doll's crying, Curry. You better take her home and put her to bed. Curry picked up Ricky as easily as if she were a doll and started to fly away. Jack's crew spread after them, cursing and sparking. Everyone scrambled up out of the dirt hole. In my arms, Kelsey yelped and kicked free before I could stop her. I saw her peek over the edge of the hole, take a huge breath, and blow. An intense sound drowned out the yelling in the air. Sparks on the punkers' hands ignited into flames in the wind. The punkers actually fell out of the sky and tumbled onto the asphalt. I could tell they'd been hurt because two of them took a while to get up, and when they did, they were on fire. They dropped to the ground again, and the four guys fumbled and slapped and cursed until the flames were out. Then they got up, stumbling a few feet before taking back to the air. Whether they were chasing Curry and Ricky or running away from Kelsey's wind, I don't know. They were gone. Just in time for the fire trucks to arrive. The firefighters leapt to the ground to see a porch on fire and a crowd of angry, scared teenagers. Imagine how. Uh, that leaves us in a perilous position, I do believe. Yes. Party not going well. Viewers should definitely uh, grab a copy of Mage and High to see what happens next. <laughs> Thank you. Looking to relax with a new book that's free of gratuitous sex, unnecessarily violence, or profanity? Clean Indie Reads is the home for flinch-free fiction. It includes over 2,000 talented indie authors from the newbie to the established bestseller. Their clean and brilliantly written works promise to take you to another world without worry about unpleasant scenes. Whether fantasy, science fiction, action and adventure, mystery, paranormal, 
urban fantasy, suspense thriller, humor satire, Christian, contemporary, romance, historical, middle grade, or young adult, there's something for everyone at Clean Indie Reads. If you are an independent author who writes clean books, consider joining the community. It's free and sure to help you promote your work. If you are a reader, Clean Indie Reads helps you have a positive experience in the hunt for that next best book. Visit cleanindiereads.com to view all their clean reads. New books are added daily, so be sure to subscribe to their blog for updates. You have a trivia question for us. I do. I do. It is, what is the name of the young hero in the Chronicles of Pradane series? That's the series that has uh, the Newbery Award winning The Black Cauldron and The High King in it. Um, and there's a, one of the books in the series actually has his name in the title, but I just wanted to know if you know what that person is. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's a mind bender for us. And you know what? Leah will reveal what the answer is next episode. So make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss the answer. So last week, our guest, Susan K. Quinn, offered a trivia question. What was that and what is the answer? All right, the trivia question is, um, in The Legacy Human, my book, uh, the main character, Eli, goes to the Creative Olympics. And so the question is, what area does he compete in, and what does what is his thing that he does in the Creative Olympics? Um, and the answer is that he competes in the Artem uh, division. There are four divisions, and Artem is the Greek name for art. And his specific art that he does is he paints in acrylics. So he's a competitive painter <laughs> in the Olympics. Oh, Leah, do you have any final thoughts to leave with us? I've been amazed when I first published my first book at how many of my friends came kind of creeping up and out of the closet to admit that they all had a story inside of them too that they wanted to write and they were afraid to try and it blew me away that they wouldn't just sit down and start writing and so I I've tried to make it a goal of mine, in addition to writing my own books, to encourage others, get that story out there, whether it's a, a factual story, a memoir, or something creative. Uh, we have stories inside of us, and whether or not anybody ever reads them, getting it out uh, onto paper, onto the screen, is such a gratifying experience. Um, I grew so much with that first book and every book since, and it's a wonderful, wonderful Thing to do. I, I just encourage people to write it. Don't be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. Um, just enjoy that process of writing. It's, it's awesome. I, I too can attest to the fact of how, how uh, gratifying it is just to see your work down and, and other people being able to, to avail themselves of it. So, yeah, that, yeah. That's a good thought. That, that first time where somebody comes back and talks to you about one of your characters and said, oh, I love how they did this, or, oh, I really like that guy, or can I meet him? <laughs> and uh, and just like, <laughs> wow, I made, I made something that touched somebody else. That's really neat. And uh, yeah. yeah, just a fun experience. I hope that everybody tries it at least once in their lives. I hope you've enjoyed getting to know Leah London a little bit. The final installment in her science fiction and fantasy series is coming out by June 1st. Links to check out all her books are in the notes below. I'm LRW Lee, author of the Andy Smiths and Fantasy Adventure series. The ebook of book one is available for free download. That's Blast of the Dragon's Fury. So be sure to click the link below and it'll take you to Amazon where you can get your free copy. I'd also count it an honor if you leave a review once you finish reading it. Our guest next episode is fantasy author Kirsten Pulioff, so be sure to tune in for that. Thank you all for listening.